Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about how to cultivate a heart of thanksgiving when you are in your waiting season. The other morning, I kneeled down by my bed to pray. And I had all of these things in my heart uh, that I'm waiting on the Lord for. There's a lot of things that are moving forward as always in life. And then there are things I have been waiting on the Lord for and praying for and believing God for, for many years. And sometimes that's the way it is, which puts me in mind of Abraham and Sarah. They had a promise from God, an impossible sized dream. And maybe that's you today. You have a prophetic word, a promise, um, a dream, a vision from God that seems impossible according to your circumstances. Maybe God has spoken to you or you're waiting for him to do something to give you an answer an instruction a direction to move in this season or into your next season but you're waiting on the Lord and they Abraham and Sarah they were waiting on the Lord and they had this impossible size dream but at some point after doing everything they knew to do and things that God never called them to they began to praise the Lord and when I knelt before the Lord by my bed and I was bringing all these things to him that I've been waiting on him for and things that are going on right now that say, that make me think, how is this going to happen? And that's the definition of worry. God, how are you going to work this out, right? Asking him how, 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 how. And sometimes our hearts need to cry out to God so he can reset them in worship. And, and he does that by thanksgiving. And so when I knelt, he said, just rest before me. Sometimes we come to God in prayer and we want to list out everything that we are believing him for or our worries. And that's good because God calls us to cry out. But then there are times when he tells us to just be still and give him thanks. And so I want to talk to you from Psalm 37, the scripture he gave me to give to you, beloved. Psalm 37 says, do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious because of the workers of iniquity. Lord, bless your word. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like a green herb. But verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of he who prospers in his way. And so God tells us how to wait. And then it goes on to say, wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt you to help to inherit the land. And I just love this. I just love this because it says that mark the blameless man and observe the right, the upright for the future of that man is peace. And so I, I just wanted to read a few verses for you, but I want to tell you that when we when we wait patiently, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, when we commit our way to the Lord, when we wait on him and be still before him, sometimes we do that in prayer instead of fretting and bringing everything to him and plotting and scheming and trying to figure things out in our own mind. And sometimes we're not planning to do evil. We're just trying to figure out how we can move the dial a little bit, how we can figure things out, why things are happening. And the Lord says that is worship but when you delight in the Lord and you commit your way to him that is worship so it's not just the worship of lifting our voices which is a form of worship but committing our way to him and resting in his faithfulness is a form of worship and when we do that we cultivate a heart of thanksgiving we stop focusing on what we cannot fix and what we cannot control and we delight in the lord and we commit each day to him and in that we begin to have a thankful heart 
And when we begin to have a thankful heart, sometimes it's like, okay, Lord, well, let me list my things that I'm thankful for. Let me list um, openly and speak orally to you what you're doing in my life. And that helps us to look for the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and the lessons in life. Sometimes we have to change our perspective and begin to look for things to be thankful for, to stir ourselves up in remembrance um, uh, of what God is doing in our lives and what is going well while we're waiting on the Lord to bring his will to pass, that prophetic word, that promise that he's spoken to us, that we know that we know that God has given us. And so I just want to encourage you today. If you're in a season of waiting, I want to encourage you to cultivate a heart of thanksgiving by delighting in the Lord, committing your way to him, waiting on him with a heart of stillness and thanksgiving. Not fretting or looking at those who are doing evil, but knowing that if you have committed your way to the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. He will bring his will to pass in your life. Not looking at how long it's going to take or how much time has passed, but trusting in the Lord that he's going to do what he promised you. And in also, I would like to say that um, enjoying the season that you're in. And that goes back to looking for the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and the lessons so that we can have something to be thankful for as we look forward to the future and trust God to make it happen. God, a, a, a thankful heart, thanks him for what he's doing not now. A, a person who is resting in the Lord and his faithfulness is not, God, you might have an eye to the future of what God is going to do, but God also wants to know that you trust him enough, that you're willing to to rest in his faithfulness. That means stop all your work and your labor and your fretting and just rest in the fact that God is faithful to keep his word. God is faithful to you. God is faithful to do what he promised you. He will keep his word to you. And so when you're doing that, then you can enjoy the season that you're in. It's a sign of worship. It's a sign that you trust the Lord when you are able to not put the worries. Jesus put it this way. Do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has troubles of its own. Uh, for today has enough troubles of its own. Let tomorrow worry about itself, but you focus on today. That is my translation. Today has enough things that you have to focus on today, that you would not give your attention to how tomorrow is going to work out, but rest in the Lord's faithfulness and know that if he cares about the lilies of the valleys, that he's going to meet you there. Not only is he going to provide for you, but he's going to prosper you, that he's going to bring his purposes to plan, uh, purposes and plans to pass in your life that you would be thankful, that you would look for things to be thankful for, that you would give thanks um, when it seems like there's nothing to be thankful for, that you would find, <laughs> that you would find things like a treasure hunt to thank God for, to lift your hands and delight in him, delight in the Lord, delight in his faithfulness and watch it change your atmosphere. And, um, Watch it change the way that you wait instead of waiting and worry and fretting. You will find yourself in a place of rest and worship. And so as I was saying at the beginning of this, the Lord reminded me when I hit the floor to just worship him, not to fret, but just to rest in him, just to rest in him. And the minute that I laid my burdens before him, I had an attitude of gratitude. I laid everything before him and then I looked up and I just began to thank him and worship him for what he has done, what he is doing and what I know is already done in heaven and will be made beautiful in time.
He makes everything beautiful in time. He sets eternity in the hearts of man, but we cannot find it out from the beginning to the end, meaning that's out of Ecclesiastes, meaning that it takes time. God never tells us. He gives, well, God almost never shows us everything all at once. He shows us the end from the beginning, but he doesn't show us the different seasons and stages and steps that we're going to have to take to get there. No, we have to follow him. We have to let him guide us and lead us season by season until we get to the place that he has called us to. And then there will still be a crossing over because we're always following Jesus forward. And so I just want to encourage you to trust the Lord, to feed on his faithfulness, delight yourself in him, and to um, cultivate thankfulness for everything as you wait on him and trust him to work out his plan in your life. God bless you. Until next time.